Hallelujah. Turn to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and let's get right in this. We are going to have a service tonight. I am stirred and excited. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and then Luke 10. Welcome to New Beginnings Church. We are in a new series on what faith will do. Last week we talked about faith obtains and look at your neighbor and say you need to understand. You need to understand. Faith understands. Faith understands. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, what we preached last week, the elders obtained a good report. Now going into what we're doing this week. Through faith, we what? Understand. That the worlds were framed by the word of God. That things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Lord, I thank you for this service. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your word. Let faith arise in everybody's heart in Jesus' mighty name. Let me say what you would say if you had the stage today. Thank you, Amen and amen. Thank you, Amen. We are living in a generation that thinks. Oh, I remember back when the faith movement was on. And it's, it's always been silly to me. We, we say we remember when the healing revival happened. Like God has decided yeah. that in that time frame, He is going to teach and allow people to live by faith. And in this time frame, He's going to heal people. Come on. Yeah. I can tell you what happened in each, and you've had it. How many of you have ever been studying the Word and a verse you've looked at forever? Yeah. You all of a sudden understand it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's happened to all yes. of us. Yes. What we miss as the church, though, is the moment that happens, you just got revelation. You yeah. just understood. Yeah. You need to jump up and use that. The reason you all of a sudden understood it is at that moment faith came. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, that's right. It says we understand that the worlds were framed together by the Word of God. Amen. You want to know why some people don't believe? You got that hard case neighbor that you've been preaching to your whole life and he won't ever listen? Like that one guy I told y'all about off camera last week. I'll preach this to Facebook. I kept asking this fellow. We asked him and we asked him. A bunch of us bugged him. Bub, won't you go to church? No. Mean old grouchy. No. Ask him one time, why, will you go to church with us? And he said, no. And I, I thought, well, we knew you need to be bold. Why won't you go? He said, I ain't got no peanut butter. Yeah, you heard that right. He said, I don't have any peanut butter. I did just like you. I thought, oh, this old dude was crazy. What? I couldn't help it. I said, what does that have to do with going to church? And the old man said, well, one excuse is just as good as another. What's your excuse? Yeah. Turn to Luke 10. Bless him, Lord. Amen. Bless him, Jesus. Oh, That's the truth. If you are out there and you are dealing with diabetic nerve pain, get yourself ready. Take your hand. Touch where if it's in your feet, if it's in your fingers. <clears throat> in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Nerves, you live and not die. You fire when God tells you to fire. And you don't fire when it's not time. In the mighty, lovely name of Jesus, diabetic nerve issues, go! Luke the 10th chapter we need to be a people that not only has head knowledge and a little bit of heart knowledge but, but we need to become if, if we're going to do in this city and this county and this state what we're called to do we're going to have to be a people that understands faith you got a faith pastor, and I can turn to the book of the Revelation and the story of the beast, and faith is going to come out. <laughs> Reason we're not living by faith in certain areas, any area, or just not doing it is we don't understand. Mm -hmm. Look, Tim. I'm about so excited I can't do this tonight. I've had the power of God moving on me since 5 o'clock this evening. I feel like I can just get up here and do a rebel yell and every one of her needs get that. <laughs> Glory! unto him, go and do thou likewise. Mm -hmm. Jesus just ministering to somebody. Mm -hmm. Now it came to pass as they went. Everybody say they. they. Jesus never went anywhere alone. He always had twelve fellows called into the ministry following everywhere he went. Sometimes bigger crowds. Yeah. And it says, uh, now that whole bunch, they followed with him. This is important. Bless it, Lord. It came to pass as they went, when are we going to get back in the church as being a team? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. That's the truth. Come on, when am I going to wear your burdens just as hard as I would wear mine and get in your needs yeah. just as hard as I would take on my needs? One of the things he taught this bunch was, fellas, they need to at least be two of you when you go out. Yeah. 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 Come on. That's right. That's right. That's right. He kept his team with him. We, we don't have teams in the churches anymore. It's all about me and myself and what I can get and what I can do. It's a selfish generation to where everybody around us is selfish. That's the truth. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's the truth. Come on, they're, they're mad. You, you, you watch people at Christmas. Compete. <laughs> Compete over everything. Oh, Brother so and so got his kid this. We got to get ours one, even though you ain't at the place you can yeah. buy it. And, and, and if they put up better Christmas lights than you, you go light shopping. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> come on, I, I got Christmas lights. I'm not, I got a Christmas tree building. My mom was severely abused around Christmas, and she loves it. So if she wants a new tree every year, we buy a new tree every year. Yeah. But we're competing. No. Jealous. That's right. Jesus was forming a team. See, he knew all along, if I can get these 12 men to understand what I'm trying to do, these 12 guys will have a ministry 
that it says in the Bible, turn the world upside down. Quit looking how small we are here in this box. I, I have never cared about that in a long time. It don't take many of us, but it takes us. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Amen. They went. They entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received them, him into their house. And they tried to redneck that. Bless him, Lord. Todd, his preaching buddy Scotty, Scotty's worship team, my singers, my buddy Danny Ray, his worship team, and my buddy Joe and his singers, we show up in your town and come to your house. Now, come on. Yes. Yeah, and we could really just say that if Pastor showed up at your house today, what would go on at your home? Yep. Come on, I've been there. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, you, you let Clyde and Ruth come to my house. Uh, we throwing stuff in the garage. We sticking stuff under the beds. Uh, we wiping down things that we didn't think we need to wipe down 15 minutes ago. If they come into the house, uh, we got to get the house ready. And we're going through the freezer, not looking for that cheap marked down stuff that we bought yesterday. And is there any good meat in that freezer? Yeah, yeah. She invited not only Jesus, but they that followed him, 12 men that followed him. She brought them into her home. She all of a sudden, and this is not Jesus' ministry staff. Martha's not on his team. His team's with him. Yeah. She's his friend. Right. It says that Mary and Martha and Lazarus, what did they say when Lazarus... He whom thou lovest to yeah. sit. That's right. Yeah. That's right. There's some people on your ministry team, and there's some people your friend, and there's some people yeah. you know. That's right. Yeah. Everybody ain't your friend. That's the right. truth. Right. You got to figure that out. You don't need to be telling all your deepest, darkest secret to that person you just met two weeks ago. They're not your friend. Jesus had fans. He'd go out on a mountain and preach and be 5,000 people gathered to hear him. He had 12 men that was in covenant with him that went everywhere he did. But he also had friends and in those friendships it was mostly a time to get away from. Yes. Come on, you need that. that's your problem, church. You don't understand life. You think everybody's. We've got that phrase BFF. Everybody's your. No, they ain't. <laughs> yeah, Jesus got tired. Had to get away from the crowd. He knew the value of getting along with God, and he knew places he could go that brought him peace. The best way to find out is somebody your friend is when you are with them, do you have peace? Ah, oh, come on. Y'all know that one person that just their mouth drains all the life out of you. Ah, oh, come on. That's not your friend. There's somebody that likes hearing them stories, but when I hear it, they're going to tell me they went to the mailbox that day, and this is how they tell it. Oh, I started down the driveway. You know that black top driveway? Yeah. It's got gravel on the side of it. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, that white gravel. You know, we got that gravel from the politician. That's yeah. probably illegal. And after we got well, you go down the driveway. There's some little yellow flowers that just bloomed in the spring. <laughs> now, what they're trying to tell me is that they went to the mailbox, but why do I need to know about the gravels? And the, I, I'm that way. <laughs> tell me you went to the mailbox. Don't tell me about the flowers, the blacktop. Because they're not my friend. I don't want to hear them. <laughs> Come on. 
I'm sure if you rode here with me and Lena. <laughs> Usually on the way here, Lynn preaches to me what I preach last service. But on the way home, it's fishing. <laughs> oh yeah, and it, 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 you all probably couldn't stand to hear it because it's I had eight pound fish. I had a two off hook. The wind was blowing from the east. I mean, the crawdads, and to us, it's friendship. Yeah, yeah. Jesus is going to <laughs> to his friend's house. She brought him into her house. I want you to know, you can bring Jesus into your home yes, you can. and not spend any time with him. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So I think that's what most of us in the Pentecostal church world do. Mm -hmm. We're bringing him into our home. Let me read it. It came to pass as they went, he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary. It does not say that's Mary's house. It says uh, that's Martha's house. It, evidently, Mary was a sister that just hung out all the time. Come on. How many of you know them folks? Uh, you, you're not going to do that to the Burgies. I'll just go ahead and tell you where we're at, how we are. If we don't feel like no company that day, you knock on the door, me and my mom will lay down and on the couch. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. Come on. I preach real about everything. I, I'm telling you, we'll lay down on you. <laughs> We plan on having a family day, and you ain't family. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on, y'all did the same stuff. You didn't want me. Martha, it's her house. She's invited him in, and it says she has a sister named Mary. It don't tell it, but they did have a brother named Lazarus. <laughs> Laughter is guilt in this story. <laughs> oh, there's they, they, that one person you don't want to see them at your front door. Oh, they're they going to eat all your food. They're they going to throw their feet on your coffee table. They're going to mess your bathroom up. <laughs> In front of your couch, it'll leave you rich. It's So, this lady, Martha, has not act like me and my mom. <laughs> Get this, take it in the garage, like this, take it in the back bedroom. What's that doing in the middle of my living room? That means we want you there. We just don't want you to see all that crap. Yeah. Yeah. This is what's going on here this day, Jesus. His friends have invited him to their house. And it says this. She had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. When? Are we going to understand that the most important thing going on today is whatever's coming out of his mouth? Yeah. 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 
it's not that you wash the machine, tore up, your car broke down, you, you babysit, no. The most important part is what does he say? Yes. We don't understand. Come on. Yeah. It's not that he chooses at 12 o'clock tomorrow to speak. He's always talking. Yes. He is the yeah. word. He is the he word. He is the word. Yes. And he's not always the word that sits on your coffee table and decorates it. He is the word. He's Amen. always talking. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> How much time do we sit at his feet? I challenge my church this week and anybody out there that wants to get into it that I, I have commanded and ordered you all to get in the Word 30 minutes every day for seven days. Yeah. Amen. I had it Yeah. You need, everybody needs to know that was a command. Yeah. I'm trying to get you all at the place to where it's not an emergency valve, right. but when I have a problem, a trial, or an issue that I walk over and break the Jesus glass and get yeah. him out to, and expect right. him to talk to my situation, right. no, it needs to be a place that you go to every day yeah. and you are familiar with it. Yeah. Yes. You know his voice. Yes. You understand it. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Hey, some of you, even in here, if you call me on the phone, and my phone don't have your number in it, it's going to take me a minute to figure out who you are. Lynn can call and whisper. And I know it's Lynn because yeah. I heard his voice. Yeah. <clears throat> Ask you for the place that is not whispering. That's right. That's good. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Jesus has showed up at his friend's house, Martha's home. Mary's hanging out. To, and, and you can tell it ain't her house because she don't care what it looks like. Yeah. She don't care what's going on. But what she does have a mindset about is if Jesus is talking, I am going to be at his feet. She knew how to maximize the word. It's big. If you're going to write anything down, you have to understand. If you maximize the word, you minimize yeah. the problem. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's I'll good. take driving here. That's that's good. Good. That's good. Pulled over at a gas station and wrote it in my notebook. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Maximize the word and you will minimize the problem. Yeah. Amen. That's good. Mary's at his feet with the mindset, if he says it, I want to not only hear it, but I want to understand it. Yeah. Yeah. By faith, we understand it. Yes. We need to learn how to be married in this Martha generation. Now, we are in a generation everybody's in a hurry. Yep. Y'all have been saw me enough on decisions at the church and things. I'm very slow. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. October to January the first to say, yeah, I'm gonna be pastor. Yeah. Why? How's that his feet? That's right. That's right. That's right. Oh yeah, I knew I wanted to do this. It would be fun. It would be exciting. It would be fulfilling. But if he wanted to whisper anything to me, telling me not to do this, I wanted to take the time to sit at his feet in here. We don't do that today. We go in a store and sit on a shelf. I've been a manager. I understand this concept. We put things out that we call impulse buying. Yeah. It's an impulsive generation. And what does that mean, preacher? That means if it made no sense, we put it 
included at the checkout line. Knowing that that checkout line is going to be a slow process. Yeah. You're going to stand there and look at it. Or we move hot pizza over there. You're going to stand there and smell that pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Impulse is going to get you. have no intention of buying a pizza. But if you're in that line standing next yeah. to it hot and smell it, you're going to buy a pizza. Yeah. yeah. Come on, when your mommy's <laughs> fixed supper, they started at breakfast. <laughs> she mixed things. She couldn't tell you how to do it. She'd tell you throw a smidgen of this in there and a dab of that in there and then stir it up and, and, and then put whatever in here. We live in a generation today if if we push the buttons wrong on the microwave and have to start over, we frustrate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> shop somewhere else. <laughs> if you don't have any hurry, don't go. <laughs> exactly. They don't have cashiers sitting in the break room like on a bench on a basketball team. I need number 25. Go check in with the rest. They don't have them. You want to know why they ain't more registers open? They don't have the cashiers. Or some idiot in home office only lets the cashiers work 20 hours that week. Yep, yeah, that's right. And it's not management trying to make their bonus. That's right. No, it's home office. That's right. You got morons that's never worked in a store. <laughs> Come on. That's right. Trying to tell people right. how to run the store. Yeah, that's exactly right. right where you are. I had things happen like I knew on an end cap. I can make $3,500 a week with this item on that end cap. Walmart would tell me, no, have the narrow peppers go there. Throw away $1,500 a week of them things. Wow. Uh, don't knock you local people in the stores. They can't help it. That's right. They, they, they can't. That's they, exactly they told right. what to do. That's right. 
be like I'm doing something wrong, but I ain't a part of it. The more I can tell it, management, I'm taking up for you. Amen. This. Amen. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> Everybody's in a hurry. Cell phones, get a phone call. Management, you need to get up here and make these checkout lines go faster. Uh-oh. <laughs> really have it, dude. I'm so blessed this day. I'm on register at 19 or something. <laughs> Management. Pick up the phone with the register. You need to get up here and open up some more registers. Bring some people up here. I said, where are you? My customer, I don't know, said 20 or 21. Whatever it was, it was right there. And I said, turn around. He turned around and I said, you just slowed this process a whole lot more by calling me. I said, if you're in a hurry, leave your buggy there. We'll put your stuff up. Go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> That's a preacher in here. It might be why I ain't managing him all the truth is the truth. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And funny, every one of them people in a hurry. I've been staying there 15 minutes. 35 people that day happened to be waiting 15 minutes. Every one of them. <laughs> Come on, we're in a generation that's in a hurry. I got in such a hurry one time, I went through a drive through paid for my food, and drove all the way to the house and did not have my food. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Mommy wasn't happy that day. She'd ordered a special cheeseburger. And she's, you didn't get my burger? And I'm, oh, boy. <laughs> I need to slow down. That's right. That's exactly right. If you're going to get mad at Walmart, don't go that day. They, there's people there, there's mamas there trying to clean them bathrooms, uh, trying to take care of her babies, yeah. and you all act like idiots toward her. Yeah. Oh, this is fun. I can talk about the religious crowd. I can talk about the mean customers. It's the society we live in. Yeah. Used to, if you went to town, all the men in town were standing in the streets talking. Yeah. Women. That's right. They wasn't in a hurry. They was there to see their friends. One of the reasons we do not have friendships today is we do not want to invest time. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You're not going to have a friend unless you give them the gift of time. Absolutely. Come on. That's right. That's right. I told you I was excited about tonight. <laughs> this is a nail word. Slow down. Yes. Get in the Word till you understand it. If you do not understand it, stay at His feet. And when you understand it, jump up right then and release your faith because the moment you understood it, faith showed up or you could not have just understood that. We understand the worlds were framed by the Word. When you understand the Word, faith has just arose in you. Yes. 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 Mary's invited Jesus and his whole ministry team into her house. Let me say this. You can do right things at the wrong time and be no benefit. You can do good things at the wrong time. Have you ever wondered why people give and give and give and you you know them you know they're generous you know they're givers but they don't ever work they don't understand see what Martha is facing this way is the most popular ministry on earth let's just don't talk about brother Todd and his buddies uh, let's bring Billy Graham that just passed away and his ministry team or, or brother Copeland and his or Joe Osteen and his team they show up at your house that day just bring 13 people in your home and it disrupts your day. 
Yeah. Martha's thinking, Jesus is here and he's got his team with me. I gotta make sure everything's right. Oh, I'm gonna let that soak a minute. That's yeah. exactly That's what true. we as the church do. That's true. We try to approach God with an attitude of, I'm going to make everything right. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. Oh, yeah, you, you, a lot of you can think that about your ministry. When I get this right, when I get that right. She's, she's got 13 fellas. And, and it, is it not a good thing to want to provide Jesus and his staff with a good meal? Yeah. yeah. It's a good thing. Yeah. She wants to be a blessing to them. Yeah. It says it though, she, verse 40, but Martha was cumbered about much serving. She's trying to serve them. She's going to Peter and saying, does that drink taste right? Is that enough? Do you want any more ice in it? Do you want a snack of cookie with that? She's serving them. It's a good thing. But the good thing ain't always the right thing. She's acting like we would. She's wanting to take care of him, but it says she's cumbered about <clears throat> much serving and came to him. She's doing a lot of hard work. And a lot of churches doing a lot of ministry. A lot of believers doing a lot of hard work. Let me tell you how to gauge when your hard work, your serving, your giving is wrong. It's right at the end of this verse. She's cumbered about with many things. Much serving came to him and said, Lord, what Lord, dost thou not care that my sisters left me to serve alone? When you start thinking there ain't nobody helping me. Yeah. 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 Come on. That's right. You might want to check what you're doing. If you think man can help you out. See, to, to redneck that, to, she's got the most popular ministry on earth in her home. She invited them in, and she brought 12 guys with him. They can eat a lot. They can drink a lot. They big old boys. Yeah. Yeah. I want to make sure they're took care of. And then as she's trying to get Peter's drink and John's chicken, he said he liked white meat or, what, or didn't want dark. She glances and sees Mary sitting there. When you have the thought, mm -hmm. I'm doing all this in the name of God and for Jesus, and she ain't, why don't God deal with her? Don't that sound like religion? Yeah. Yeah. Lord, I'm trying to make this a good day for you. You know, God's going to have a good day tomorrow whether we do it right or not. Mm -hmm. You're not going to mess up his day. Yeah. Yeah. She sees it and her first thought is she should be doing this the way I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's religion. When you think yes. yeah. if everybody would do it like you, if they yeah. look like you, dress like you, talk like you, if they would just do it like you, the whole world would be a better place. That's what she thought that day. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. This is good. 
Yeah, it's yeah. dug deep into the story. That's yeah. good. When you're that way, when you think I gotta do what you do and I gotta look like you and talk like you and be like you, no. God didn't call me to be you. No. That's right. He called me to be me. That's right. That's right. She looks at me. She's sitting over at his feet. Don't she know that the cornbread's going to burn? I can't do these drinks, and I can't clean up that mess Peter just left in the bathroom. I can't do all this. Yeah. I came today to tell you, you can't do all this. That's right. That's right. You can't do it. That's right. He don't expect you to do it. That's right. But what he does expect. Listen when he speaks. Amen. Yeah. And listen till you understand it. That's good. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Don't you care, Lord? My sister's left me to serve alone. Go and bid her that she help me. Lord, they ain't like me. When are you going to make them like me? I'm serving. You're holding up a standard. <laughs> the standard. Hold the standard high. You know what that standard usually is? It's cloth. It's clothing. Hold her high above. <laughs> if you're easily offended, don't look at my boat pictures. I'm going to have on shorts. <laughs> My britches never did give me any power, any <laughs> grace, or any anointing. I've lived in a freezer. I had this happen. <laughs> Struggling to believe God for a car. Getting in the Word, trying to find verses, and I found one where Jesus asked for a brand new donkey. Yeah, he did. He sure did. He did. He did. He did. He did. He did. I figured that and he, he wasn't believing for no SUV. They wasn't none. But the, the, the best ride into that little city in that Where? day was a donkey. And he yeah. didn't want one that nobody else's hand in and sat on. I figured that out. <laughs> so I'm starting. I, I'm believing God for a car. It ain't there. One I'm driving used to be red, but now it's pretty much pink. Them springs that used to be under a cushion in that seat is now somewhere around my hat in the back. <laughs> I don't know if it ever had an air conditioner in it, but I did know there wasn't no working air conditioner in it right now. These church people invite me to Indiana to eat, meet some other church people. That's a five hour drive. It's a hundred and some degrees out that day. I'm hot. I got on my shorts, my t-shirt, my windows rolled back. I, I just stepped out of a cooler that I've been in all week that the warmest place in it's 32 degrees. And the, the place I was in the most, while I'm counting, my ink would freeze in my ink pen. Oh yeah, there's big boys out there right now, amen, and it's inventory in this month, and they they have to step out long enough to let their ink pens fall out. So I'm hot. But I'm excited, I'm going to meet church people. I drive five hours. Get to the parking lot of Ponderosa in Salem, Indiana. I don't care to say it. I'm not naming names. Honduras. Man, minister, pastor comes over to my car window and says, Brother, what you got on them shorts for? Uh, you see this piece of junk car I'm driving? It's hot. <laughs> well, Bub, before you come in Honduras, we can bring you by my house and get you some long sleeves and some long breeches. Oh, my God. I want these holiness folks 
see you and enjoy. That cloth on the below your knees, which made breeches, that makes you have great power. Foolish. Yeah. Foolish. Yeah. You, know, when, you know when I got to studying that stuff, what I found, you know I'm going to find it too, it's in there. Jesus, let's give you a hint, he's fixing a fish dinner on the shore. Mm-hmm. Peter is laying naked in his boat. <laughs> now, scholar on that, Lord. <laughs> yeah. yeah, What's he doing, Todd? He's laying in the sun on his boat, naked. <laughs> Tired of religion. Yeah, that's right. I, it breaks my heart, and I've already had it happen, no longer than I've been pastor, girls calling and saying, what do I have to wear to come to your church? <laughs> uh, don't come naked. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you got your own boat out in the middle of the ocean somewhere, and you want to lay in naked, pour it on your boat. <laughs> you know what you We're cumbered about with so many things. Boy, I did everything. (laughs) Religion and bad customers at Walmart. But it's a perfect example of the society we live in. Always in a rush, always in a hurry, but we always know what the other fellow's doing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yep. And this cornbread's going to burn. I can't. You didn't see what Peter done back there. And I don't remember if he wants white meat. To, why ain't you helping? Yep. That's right. Because you shouldn't be doing what you're doing. And why are you so tore up all the time? Yep. You're too big a hurry. <clears throat> Slow down, Jerry. Amen. Slow down, people. Amen. Worry about your own clothes. That's right. Don't show up my church naked. No. We'll we'll clothe you if you do. Yeah. I'm probably ain't even gonna run you off in, but we'll get something on you. Right. Hey, some of us are still sore out here. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh yeah. I want them here. That's right. I want the ones that ain't holding no standard. They ain't no, the only, right. only standard we should hold up is the mighty, lovely name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. 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 He going to deal with me. They going to be things that I can do that's absolute sin in the limit. And they going to be things that Lynn absolutely run wild with that I wouldn't do for nothing. Which one of us is right? Both of us. God don't say to Lynn what he says to me. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Come on. That's right. That's right. We live in a generation that nobody wants to be their self. That's true. We've got 
curly haired girls spend a fortune on straighteners. Yeah. We got straight haired girls that spend a fortune on curls. <laughs> Hey. We've got white people yeah. ladies in the sun trying to be black, and we got black people wiping bleach on to try to lighten their skin. Yep. <laughs> and nobody wants to be who they are. If you can find somebody in this life that is hungry to hear and understand God's word and absolutely confident in who they are. Yeah. I know I'm a mess, but I figured out my best friend is real good at getting me out of messes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. I know that cut, but the, your blondes want to be brunettes, your brunettes want to be blondes. Your large people want to be skinny. <laughs> You skin that way. And, and look, go look. <laughs> the big people are drinking shakes that takes the weight off. The skinny people are drinking shakes that <laughs> took the weight on. Yeah. I thought I was getting off track there, but it's true. Yeah. This whole multi-billion dollar industry is to you, make you fat or make you skinny. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. I've lived this. I've kept off almost 80 pounds for five years. Yeah. I've never been more criticized. Yeah, that's I promise right. promise you. Go with me. That's right. I can go to Hazard tomorrow and eat at Ponderosa and there'd be somebody coming up to me. Golly, you look yeah. bad, brother. <laughs> now, I'm getting flesh sometimes. I do. I do. Like the last show that did that to me, I told him, I said, yeah, your nose is about that wide. <laughs> I said, it's big as five people's noses. <laughs> and he looked at me and called and I said, what? I'm not mad at you. I don't say that. That's exactly right. That's it exactly took a right. lot of faith. Absolutely. I love sweets. Yes. Oh, yeah. I got, yeah, I got a wrong relationship with them all over. Yeah. It took dedication. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Not to eat that stuff. That's right. Yeah, especially my job. I manage the food side of the building at Walmart. Little Debbie come out with a new cake. It talked to me for two months. Todd, you've never had them. I have peanut butter in me, Todd. Ah, come on. You say you're going to go on a diet tomorrow, and food talks to you. Yeah, yeah. it does. Yes, it does. It's understandable. It works. Yeah. yeah it I can I can sell you fresh bread when the baker is baking it and you smell it. That's exactly right. That's exactly. You walk by it all day, but if we're bringing it out of the oven and we can fan that odor out on the <laughs> produce to where you all smell it, we can't bake enough of it. Yep. You're never going to get anywhere with God on impulse. That's yeah. right. That's right. Be anxious. For yeah. For yeah. There ain't no trap door, side door to get you allowed to be anxious. That's right. Are you anxious about your bills? Are you anxious about your relationships? If you're anxious, you're wrong. She's very anxious. I'm serving and look at her. She ain't even helping. It ain't her house. I'm a good fellow, but quite the other day, I don't know, me and Lynn cross paths in the yard. And we're playing with my pup, and Lynn says, Hey, Mom, fix green beans, cornbread, and neck bones. You want some? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yum. Yeah, I bet your mama's cooking don't get it much. And now, when you get a chance, if she cooks, even if it ain't on your normal eating list, go in. I didn't go in there and then say, all right, now that we give you cornbread, I need you to go make the bed in that back room. And <laughs> <laughs> My 
not my house. <laughs> no, he was too busy trying to get that last piece of meat off his bones. Come on. Yeah. She sees her. Says, Lord, and now she's she's went from noticing her sister ain't working like her to where all of a sudden she's mad at God. This is really going to get you religious people. You often think, why does God bless her? I know she ain't living the standard. Because she ain't working hard as you work. Lord, don't you care? My sister has left me to serve alone. Go make her come to me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha. I don't know if y'all understand that. But when my parents said, Todd, come here, everything's okay. But when they said, Todd, Todd. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-oh. That means whatever it was I was just participating in, I shouldn't have been participating in and I just got caught. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. How many in this day and age does that statement fit? They are careful. They're full of care and they're troubled about a lot of stuff. That fits most of us in this nation and in the church today. Careful and troubled. But one thing is Needful. Look at your neighbor and say one thing. One, one thing. thing. Look at your other neighbor and say one thing. <laughs> if it's one thing, it don't take two things. And Jesus is saying you need one thing. And that's big. It's the answer to every situation you face in life. There's one thing. Whether you need healing, there's one thing. If you need finances, there's one thing. If you need a better home, there's one thing. If you need peace in your relationships, there's one thing needed. Nothing else. All of that other stuff you're trying to do is works that is not causing you to do what's needed. Amen. One thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, and it will not be taken away from her. One thing you need to be able to ignore the mess around you. Amen. That's pretty good. Amen. Ignore the needs. Everyone in your house. They need to eat. They need to drink. They miss. Ignore who's there. Ain't no big shots and little shots. It ain't no different. If I show up in your house or old man that used to be around here, Eddie. Everybody knows Eddie. I got a good Ebony story. Probably won't fit my message, but I got to tell it. It's good. There's a lady in the bakery, Dilly, IGA, come to me in the meat department. She said her grease bin was too heavy. She couldn't dump it. Would I dump it for? Sure. Park it there in my coat. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. We parked that in that coat. It, it can go from 350 degrees boiling to every how high you want to turn it up. And it's boiling when she brings it back there. Parked it in my cooler and I work around there just a little bit and I think, oh shoot, I need to eat that grease right now. I did not know that the hair cutting salon below IGA had just dumped six or seven big bags of hair in that dumpster. About 55 gallons of grease. What I also did not know 
And David is over in that dumpster looking for popcorn. <laughs> yeah. I don't know none of this thing. All I know is I gotta get her grease dumped and I get it up on the side of that thing and I'm pouring the grease in it to, and I want you to know Bigfoot all of a sudden jumped up on the side of that dumpster. It was the scariest, meanest looking thing. It was every color hair you could imagine. Oh, I done thought I meet up. I've been in the woods. I know what all these wild, I can tell you, bugs and snakes and trees. I did not know what this creature was. <laughs> you know, red hair, black hair, blonde hair, gray hair, white hair, long hair, short hair. And it, it was like Cousin It. I just poured 55 gallons of grease on Abby do while he's standing in seven bags of hair and it, he's covered. Yeah. And he comes out and it's the grace of God that I set that grease in a cooler and let it cool off. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. I told you that wasn't fit the message, but it's too, it's too good not to tell you. I could work it in there if I tried, but I ain't gonna try. It's just a funny story. <laughs> I thought I was eat up from a, some kind of exotic wild creature that I didn't know what it was. Exotic wild creature. Yeah. And then once I realized what I'd done, I had to get Ivy dude in the back of IGA and get him cleaned up. You talk about a job. I was say that one. Yeah, I'm very chicken grease and everybody's hired in ten communities. <laughs> She's mad at Jesus and Jesus says uh, one thing is needed. What was that one thing? A person that ignored everything going on around was desperately trying to hear his word and understand it. We've all got messes around us. Yeah. Mess don't matter. Are you here? Amen. Everybody stay. That's good. Amen. Faith understands his word. Maximize the word and you will minimize your problems. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for all those watching in worldwide media and here in my congregation tonight. Let us always understand the value of your word. And the Lord give us the ability to ignore the mess around us and the needs around us and things that should be done can wait. We're trying to hear you, God. Yes. And we know if we hear you and understand, faith is coming. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.